Hey, what's shaking YouTube? So today I got a video that's been very heavily requested. So I've done quite a few 3D printer videos now where I've unboxed, I've reviewed, I've made stuff, but I'm going to do a video for the beginner that just got your first 3D printer, like how do you use it? What do you do next? Where do you get your prints? How do you slice, um, slice your file and send it to the printer? So this is going to be pretty simple. We're going to do this most of this on my computer, but this is assuming you have your 3D printer already built. It's all functionally working. You, you get auto homes. You got the bed leveled, you got it heated up, you have some filament put in it, and where do you go from next? Well, this is going to be just for basically any 3D printer, but I'm going to be using my Anycubic i3 Mega as an example. Now, pretty much all 3D printers that are DIY kits, or pretty much all 3D printers will have a USB plug-in right here to the board, and that'll also have an SD card slot. It might be a full size like this, or it might be a micro SD, but either way, it's the same thing. So I prefer to print off the SD card because I don't have to have it plugged in to my computer the whole time it's printing, which takes hours. Okay, so almost every single 3D printer you buy, there will be a file on here that is just a test file that you can print. So all you do, you know, is you just turn on your printer on the menu, you go, you select it, bada bing, bada boom, it goes from there. But then what if you want to print something else, um, whether you design your own files or, you know, you just want to find something off the internet. Uh, that's what I'm going to show you guys. So we're going to go over to my computer. I'm going to show you guys how you get files off websites like Thingiverse and then how to slice your file. I'm going to be using the program Cura because it is totally free. It comes with a lot of these, a lot of these 3D printers always come with a free copy of that. And yeah, I just feel like it's totally free and it's really simple and I'm more comfortable with doing that. So this is going to be how to get your 3D printer, you know, up and printing once it's built. And yeah, I hope this helps you guys. All right guys, so the only program you're gonna need is this one here called Cura. This is Cura version 3.2.1, but I'll put a link in the description. You just wanna download the newest version. This is a totally legit program, totally free, no BS. But you'll notice I have all my different 3D printers I own right over here. But when you first open this, if you've never used it, you're, you won't be able to just pick you know your 3D printer. You're gonna have to set up the profile for your 3D printer. So first time you open it you're going to be greeted with this and say you have an Ultimaker this is made by Ultimaker so you're greeted with them right away if you have that Ultimaker or any of these printers then it's as simple as just clicking it like you have the Creality CR10 boom you got the CR10 right there if you have um, let's see a TiVo Tarantula, TiVo Black Widow they got that and yeah but if you got the Anycubic i3 Mega like the one I'm demonstrating on boom they got it right there but I'm gonna show you in case yours isn't on here so if you have a Delta style printer like the Anycubic uh, Cosel you're gonna wanna go to Cosel Mini right here but if you have your standard Cartesian style printer which is a little more common so we'll go more into that um, then you got two options you can either take something like the Prusa i3 or the CR10 and just alter the dimensions of it or you can go to custom uh, custom FDM printer, which is what we're going to do. So we're going to go here, custom FDM printer. Okay, and we're going to add our printer. Okay, notice now we got all our machine settings. Okay, so whether or not you have a heated bed, you're going to want to check that. These are all the codes for things that it does um, right when the print starts. And these are, these are all pretty standard. You can add more G code commands. And same here, this is when the print is done the done the commands at the end so you could add end commands you can add start commands but here this is going to be your build play volume so say um say uh, let's just say this was a cr10 you know even though there's already one there just because i know the build play dimensions you know you would change this to 300 by 300 by 400 so yeah it you know this is just totally whatever your printer is now here, if you don't know what these are for your specific printer, your best option is just turn all these to zero. So that's going to be my advice. Just turn all these to zero. Or you can leave this one at That's basically the same thing it does when it's on zero. If you have a dual extrusion 3D printer, you can click on two. Or try extrusion. I've never seen over try, but we can go up to eight. We're going to keep it at one. We're going to make sure this is our nozzle size. 90% of most 3D printer kits 
3D printers are going to come with a 0.4 millimeter nozzle, but you change that based on what yours is. And this should be 1.75 for standard, most standard 3D printer filament. The only 3D printer filament I ever use, anyways. Um, okay, so we're going to finish. And then we're also going to go up here. And we're going to go to manage. And we're going to change the name. Test video. Okay, so you would name it whatever your 3D printer is. Now, if your 3D printer, unless you built it yourself, like like you built it out of you know scrap parts, like you didn't have a kit, it's you're gonna have to upload firmware to it. Any kit 3D printer should already have firmware on it, so the only time you're gonna have to re-upload firmware is if you make like custom firmware to it for some reason, like you add a uh, auto level sensor or something. You can upgrade it just right here through Cura. You plug your computer in, you upgrade, you hit upgrade firmware, you down, you uh, select the file, and it'll do it right here through Cura. So that's really nice. Um, okay, so we got that all set up. So now I'm going to go through some settings on Cura here. Now, if you notice, I have a ton of settings here on the side. When you first put this program on here, you're not going to have nearly as many. Like print speeds is going to be like one or two options. Pretty much everything is just going to be like one or two options. I have a lot of these unlocked because you can bring up more things to really customize your prints by clicking on the little cogwheel like I just did. And anything you have checked here, then will pop up in here. But when you're first using this, I want you to just use just the, the real simple basic stuff you have over here. And then as you get your prints going, then you can start, you know, you know, making more settings activated and stuff. But also too, there's also, instead of using a custom where you can change all these, they have recommended settings where you basically just put, you want a really fine print, a medium, you know, you know, basically, you know, however, however thick you want your infill, your infill is the density of the model. Normally 20% is more than enough. Um, that'll save you on some filament. If it needs support or not, if you want build plate adhesion, boom, and it'll just do it for you based on that. But I like to do custom. I'm kind of a control freak, but enough of that. So Next, you're going to have to get your models. So if you're really cool and smart and you designed your own your models yourself, then you already have the STL. But if you're just trying to get something, um, like here we got life hacks. That's always useful stuff. People say I never 3D print anything useful. Look at this. Credit card cutlery. Now that is useful. We're going to print. Oh, look at this beer holder. Look at all this stuff. This is some pretty cool stuff here. What? What? I have one of these. I printed this. You could print, a, print your own Swiss Army knife. <laughs> this is pretty cool. Okay, so you get the idea. But So what we're going to do is I'm going to print this. I think this looks really cool. Credit card cutlery. So shout out to this guy. M Emma K? I don't know. I don't know, I, can, I don't know how to say that. But we're going to download the file. And... Now, there's usually notes from the person that designed it. So these are all notes you should take into account whenever you print something. And here's the printer he printed it on. And he says, don't print it with no rafts, no supports, 20% infill. And if you have a heated bed, let it cool before removing it. So obviously, so you don't bend it. So we're going to go here. And I'm assuming you already have WinRAR or 7-Zip on your computer. Because you're going to need one of those programs to zip the file because it comes in a zipped file. Okay, so he's got three different versions of it, so let's do version three. Boom. And it wants me to print it up and down like that. <laughs> cool. I don't know. That seems kind of weird to me. I don't think that'll print good like that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to rotate it. So in Cura... You can change the object's orientation. This corner right here that's lit up, that's going to be the front of my 3D printer. Okay, so I'm going to click on it here. And then I'm going to rotate it. So I'm going to take the this axis, turn it to 90 degrees. It'll drop it to the build plate. All right. And I think it'll print much better just like that. Okay, so for settings, I like... Ha basically, you can do like up to half the millimeter diameter of the nozzle. I'm using a 0.4 millimeter diameter nozzle. So 
point two should still generate pretty good results without being, you know, too slow, too fat. It's good, good healthy medium. Um, if you want it really fine, you could go down lower. Notice there's a little description that pops up on basically everything you click on if you want a more brief, you know, intro what there is. But basically, 0.2 millimeter layer height. Um, I like my initial, the first layer to be 0.3, so it sticks to the bed really good. I like my wall thickness actually, like 1.2. I also like my bottom thickness 1.2. are kind of excess settings my density 20% you can change your density pattern we're just gonna leave it on grid for now and print speed 60 is a good starting point it's a little on the fast side but you could turn it down if you're not seeing the best results so it's a good place to start at though um, where is retract okay diameter filament of the ceiling make sure that's on 1.75 um, the temperature standard PLA this is different for whatever material you're using and your PLA will usually stay on the side of it, what temperature range. But a good place to start at is 260 for the heated bed. The heated bed so, it's, so it stays stuck. Retraction, this is important. Now, retraction is the filament coming out of the printer. So this is every time it changes directions, the printer will, will pull 6.75 millimeters of filament out of the nozzle you know, while it changes direction, so it doesn't keep oozing and make blobs and stringing. So this is to prevent stringing and blobs on your prints. Now, there's a good place to start. Usually, a lot of times, I'll, this one, I'll bring it all the way up to, like, 7 or 8. And then this one, you can go anywhere from 20 to 70. You know, it's kind of, you got to really play with this. Usually around 40 or 50. Like, 45 is usually a good starting point. I'd say 7 or 45 is usually a good starting point. And you can play with it. But every printer is different, and every fill, um, Every filament's different, so that's something you just got to play with. And um, I like some Z-Hop. Z-Hop when retracting is when the run it retracts, the the printer will actually go up two millimeters to just you know contact it pulls away. So I like that support. That's if your object needs support, like this doesn't. But if I was printing something with overhangs, like if I was printing something with a ninety degree angle, then I would need to put support. And then you can either pick your supports to, to go from the bed to the, the, the overhang, or you can pick it everywhere. So, like, if your model needs supports, you know, that's where that's kind of just based on your model. This, obviously, there's nothing that needs supports. Like, if I would have printed it sideways, it might have needed support in the fork part and stuff. So, that's why I'm just going to print it flat. Build plate adhesion. I like brim. Brim is just, like, one little line around it or however many you pick. Oh, what did I just do? Okay, so I actually like this habit too when I'm using a brim. So it's just two millimeters around, kind of primes the nozzle, and uh, yeah, it just sets up the print pretty good. A skirt is like it goes around it a bunch of times, and a raft is where it like makes a raft and then prints on top of that. And you could do nothing, but I, I like the brim. I think you got to do something to prime the nozzle a little. Um, yeah, and these are experimental. You don't really need to know about that. This one here, this is if you're printing a vase or something hollow. It's, this, one's, this one's good. This is like vase mode. And then for like fill density, if you're printing a vase, obviously you put it at zero. Um, if you're printing something you want it to be heavy and dense, like you're printing a yo-yo or something, you print it at 100. <laughs> you know, you want to print a solid rock, you print it at 100% infill. So infill is how solid the model is. 20 should be more than enough for your standard object. So then once you have your object, you know you have all your settings figured out, and you can make this bigger or smaller if you wanted to. Like here, let's make it. Let's make this bigger. Sorry. Put the SD card in now. It's now it says save to removable drive. So I have the SD card in there. Let's make this even bigger. Let's go. I probably won't fit my wallet anymore. But just for the sake of the video. Boom. See, then I can make it bigger. Or if I want to make it smaller, same thing. I just go down. Eighty percent. See, we go. Let's go back to hundred. But yeah, you can make it bigger, or smaller. Just uh, showing you guys that. Scale it, you can rotate, mirror, you can move where you want it on the build plate. But we're just going to keep it keep it right here. Okay, so it says here this will take about an hour to print. So I'm actually going to be printing this on my Anycubic i3 Mega, so I'm going to pick that printer. And now it's slicing. It's really not the point, but there we go. So it's re slicing the file. 
And this one, it'll take an hour and seven minutes on my Anycubic i3 Mega. So we're going to save it. And this just takes a second, actually. There we go. File saved. So I can take the card out. We just take this card, put it in the computer. Your other option you could do, plug your computer into your printer and with, you know, just your regular port. And you can print it right here, just directly from here. But I like to print, you know, the other way. So if you had it printed uh, or on here, you would just go to this monitor and it would all be set up right here. Boom, print, you're good, you're good to go. You can preheat everything through Cura, which is nice because if you get any errors, the the printer kind of will tell you what's going on a little bit. So when you're first learning, it's not bad to print it this way because you get to monitor it a little bit. But my computer's always tied up editing videos and doing God knows what. So, yeah, so that's why I always print off the SD card. So I'm going to pop the SD card out. We'll go back in the kitchen, and I'll see you guys in a second. All right, guys, so now it's saved down here. So I'm going to pop the SD card in the printer, and we're just going to go into our screen right here. You click print our cutlery thing and boom and it'll start printing so we'll let that let that heat up and I'll show you and we're good to go alright guys so we're just about heated up so it should start any second here got one more degree on the bed <laughs> come on there we go okay so now she's starting up so I'm printing an ABS here, so I had to put a little hairspray on the bed so it would adhere. But with PLA, with the heated bed, usually we don't really have to do anything. Hairspray still works, you know, better. You know, kind of good to just be sure. But yeah, that's all you, all you really need to do to get going. All right, guys. So yeah. 3D printing, as far as just getting your 3D printer running and printing, isn't really hard at all, and you should not be intimidated by it. Um, designing your files, stuff like that, that, that's a little harder. I'm trying to learn that right now so I can design my own yo-yos and all sorts of cool plans I got in the future. But, yeah, so this is definitely something you should not be intimidated by. Cura, I really recommend that program. I like it a lot. If you have any questions or anything, leave them in the comments. I'll try to answer all of them. But, yeah, I highly recommend that if you're somebody that hasn't got a 3D printer just because you're intimidated on how to use it, it's really not that hard. Um, I mean, yeah, you got to learn about your printer and, and everything, but it, the actual printing aspect isn't, isn't really that hard. So, thank you guys for watching, and I'll see you later.